Hi everybody and welcome back. This is about the timing of now. And pardon the authentic soundtrack, but the president's in town, there's a lot of traffic outside. So I am accused, I am often accused of saying, it's always a good time to buy. People read my newsletter and they say, you know, you make it seem so rosy or uh, you make it seem like it's a good time to buy and then you turn around and tell the sellers it's a good time to sell. Well, there's truth in all of this. And, and here's why. At least, here's my approach to this. Regardless of which side of the equation you're on, whether you're buying or you're selling, everyone's goals are unique. Generally speaking though, in life, if you just get on with it, you're better off. I've learned that those who take action are the most successful. They may fail from time to time, yes, but their victories supersede their failures and they're the winners. I know you're saying, yeah, 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 I know. I hear you. So let's break it down and let's take buying first. Too many buyers try to time the market. That's a fool's errand. The market changes. It's like the weather. I mean, think about it. When you go from say winter to summer, the weather can get cold, then hot and then back again innumerable times depending on the day. It may even rain or sleet, hard to predict. But generally, you know that as you gravitate from winter to summer, it's going to get warmer. The market's the same way. We have fluctuations from day to day, from seasonal market cycle to seasonal market cycle, but the trend is generally upward over long periods of time. Meaning that if you're in it for the right time horizon and you experience time in the market instead of timing the market, you'll likely fare far better in the end. And over those years, you will have built up equity in a property and have thrown it away on rent. Now, there's a caveat to all this as well. It's the assumption that the buyers that I'm talking about are buyers who are seeking to create a home, which has its own unquantifiable and unique attributes and rewards. And I say this because buying a property as an investor may assume completely different considerations, goals, time horizons, and applies to, to a lesser degree to my premise. So for home buyers in Manhattan, where rents are extremely high, the highest in the country actually, my premise that it's almost always generally a good time to buy remains acutely true. Now, let's put that even into further context. Baby boomers. Baby boomers have accumulated an overwhelming amount of wealth, much of which is in cash. And to give you a sense of how much, compare this. Many estimates show that five to, tri five to six trillion dollars were infused into our economy over the past few years, something we've never seen before. But over the next 20 years, similar estimates state that 50 to 70 trillion dollars. Now think about that, not five to six trillion like we just saw, but 50 to 70 trillion dollars of wealth will be handed over from the boomers to younger generations. And this will come in various forms, half of which will be real estate and cash. And a ton of this wealth will be used to purchase what is the premier asset class. You got it, real estate. In the next 15 to 20 years, this cash, coupled with the desire to buy real estate, will be used not only to buy second homes, third homes, but homes for their kids, grandkids, as well as investment properties. Now think, what will that level of demand do to prices? And hence value over the coming decades, especially if the scarcity of supply remains an issue. Look, this country as a whole, as well as here in New York City, we're experiencing a housing crisis, which has been a really a lingering effect since the financial crisis of 2008. The level of construction of the past decade and a half has been substantially lower than it was in the 90s and the early 2000s. What's put even more downward pressure on this has been government regulation and most recently interest rates. And another factor has been the wave of new buyers, mostly millennials, who have been entering the marketplace year after year. This measurably higher demand into the future means that we may never have enough inventory to satisfy our needs. Now, you likely know the phrase, the tide raises all boats. Just imagine 
if you bought a good property sooner rather than later. The tide, in this case, that wave of transferred wealth will raise all boats. It is precisely this, which is the basis for my premise, that it's almost always, with the right time horizon, generally a good time to buy. You just need to find the right property for you, your unique time horizons, your circumstances. And in Manhattan right now, we're seemingly bouncing along the bottom of our current cycle, a cycle in which we've witnessed a gradual decline in deal volume, which has been a consequence of demand, which has been a consequence actually of inventory and a consequence of a doubling of interest rates. Well, every rational indication is that interest rates have now stabilized and will eventually soften. So even if you're still so inclined to time the market because you simply can't help yourself, particularly over the long haul, consider this extraordinary moment. Prices have softened some eight to 10% in the last year and prices are reflecting a period somewhere between really 2018 and 2019. Based on all the market fundamentals, particularly the low inventory levels and the impending drop in interest rates, this level of regression, eight to 10%, will not likely repeat itself soon. So consider the moment of where we are right now at the beginning of 2024 and compare it to where we might be in 2030 or 2035, 2040, 45. You see what I'm saying? Now, selling is a slightly different proposition. When selling, you can actually capitalize on customary market cycles and fare better. That said, each seller has a super agenda of why they are actually selling. Depending upon what that is, may determine how proactively a seller might execute their plan. Are you selling because you're upgrading? Downsizing? Did you get a new job in a different neighborhood or a different city? Do you need the money? The reasons are endless, but real. Now, historically, there are moments in the year that are better to sell than others, like mid, -Febu mid to late February through May, and the short market that reveals itself in the fall post Labor Day into the first and second week of November. And conversely, late summer and Thanksgiving into late January would be considered the least fruitful times. Both scenarios are customarily determined by the number of buyers that are in the marketplace at that time. With that information, a seller can be a bit more judicious about when they list. However, the point is still the same. In life, you're better off if you just get on with it. Some sellers will painfully deliberate over every penny when they would be better served and net a better result if they were simply to accept a solid outcome and move on to the next chapter. Some sellers will put their lives completely on hold while seeking a diminishing return to their bottom line. If they just got on with it, that unquantifiable reward of living your life, attacking your life's plan, is really what the doctor ordered. So when it's time to sell, one of the mo you have to consider the market conditions you're actually in. Price perfectly. And of course, it may pay off to wait several months or to wait until the following year, maybe. But beyond that, one risks eroding your emotional bottom line. You must maximize those conditions that you've been given. Get in, get out, get it done. So in both scenarios, buying or selling, it's about action. And there is no better phrase that captures that than there's no time like the present. I know it's totally cheesy, but it's true. So yes, I am guilty as charged. But again, as mentioned at the beginning of this long monologue, this is just a broad stroke. So please, if you like, contact me so that we can actually have a dialogue, not a monologue, about your circumstances, your specific situation. But until then, have an amazing end of winter and I will see you soon.